Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for part two of making my pair of combinations. If you missed part one, where I dropped a base bodice and do the mock-ups, head back and watch part one first. Also, if you're looking for a full explanation of this project and why I'm making what I'm making, go check out my 1910s project announcement video. So this week I'm working on finishing up my pair of combinations. I need to cut out the fashion fabric, get the lace attached and do all the facings and finish the garment. I'm Jane. This is the Rainy Janery. Join me on my crafting and sewing adventures. All the pieces of my combinations are cut out and ready to go. I'm going to do some of the lace applique, like the insertion lace first. It's just easier when it's flat instead of waiting until it's a round object and then putting it on. I've been debating about what to do with I have this lace as edge lace that I bought. It was kind of pretty this way, but I've been playing around with it and did a little box pleat. I think that is gonna make a really, really pretty kind of ruffled edge. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do a little bit of fabric and then an, an actual ruffle of the linen and then this, but I think this is enough. I dropped the side seam uh, down a little bit and cut a curve into it so that it will hopefully be higher at the side seam and lower in center front. Um, again, I'll link Bernadette Banner's video below so you can see how she did it. Um, I just kind of took a look at that pattern that she used and mimicked that on mine. I think I'm going to sew the legs together and then put the ruffle, these ruffles on. Hi everyone. Today is a super low energy day for me. I'm feeling kind of gross. Um, luckily, I've reached the point in yes thank you Neville. uh i have reached the point in my project with my combinations where i have to do miles and miles of hand felling i'm not going to show you all of the hand sewing because it's super boring you know what it looks like uh, i will show you when i'm done i just wanted to pop on and show you this i had said earlier that i was going to sew the insertion lace to the panels before I sewed the panels together at the seam. And I realized why you don't do that. <laughs> what ends up happening is that a little bit of the linen of, gets trapped in between the lace. And so when you have the seam, you have this kind of white bit. It's not horrible. And you know, if I stand away, it, it doesn't look really awful, but it also doesn't have that lovely kind of continuation of the transparency from one insertion lace panel to the other. So if you are attempting insertion lace for the first time, like I am, then I would highly suggest sew your panels together, then put your insertion lace on because then you can, the insertion lace will be separate from the linen at the seam and you can cut away that, that piece of linen. I did the best I could. I trimmed as much of it away on either side as I could, as close as I could get my scissors, but there still is a tiny little bit of linen trapped in there. So 
Um, just a note, if you are doing this like I am, don't, don't do this. It doesn't look as nice. <laughs> Good evening, here is my update on my combinations. I have finished the bottoms, the britches, knickers, whatever you wanna call them. Um, all of the, the seams on the inside have been turned and felled, including um, all the seams where the insertion lace is. I got all the edge lace put on and the insertion lace is in. And I think it looks really pretty. Needs to get the bodice seams turned and felled and then get all the lace put on that and then we can assemble these two together. Hi everyone, just an update on where I am with my pair of combinations. I got the bodice pieces sewn together and all of the seams felled. The next thing I need to do is put some facing on it. So here is the bodice portion of my pair of combinations and the next step it says in the book is to add all the insertion lace to this. I don't think I really bought enough insertion lace and frankly it's going to be underneath my corset and I find lace on my skin to be really scratchy. So I think I'm just gonna skip the insertion lace on the top and just leave it as kind of a plain bodice. I cut out a two inch bias strip and I'm just going to machine sew that all the way around and then I'll probably hand tack that on the inside. The other thing I wanted to mention was if you have any problems making bias tape, I found a really, really great tutorial online that I will link below. I think the blog is called Make It Dash Love It. She has this wonderful little pattern for making bias tape. I've used her method, gosh, 10, at least 10 times now, and every time it comes out perfect. I made her version that makes, I think it's like 120 inches of bias tape, so I'm hoping that is enough. I did around both arm size and the neckline, and I'm hoping I have enough left to do the vertical front pieces. It would be great if I only had to do it once. All of the bias tape is sewn on to the neckline and to the arm's eye and I've pressed it all back. The next step would be to turn under and then hand sew all of this bias tape down. But I had an idea, so I'm gonna take this beading lace and sew this onto the edge. So this will become the gathering channel when the ribbon is in it. So I didn't really see the point of hand felling all of the neckline bias tape down and then also sewing stitching this down on top of it it seemed like double effort what i'm going to do and you know we'll see if this works is I pressed under the bias tape so that the the raw edge was up inside the sewn seam and then when this gets sewn on top it's catching the raw edge of the bias tape underneath here. So hopefully I only have to sew this once. So I'm gonna do that next. And then I will have to hand finish the arms I seam is because I don't have lace going on here. So as I'm pinning this on here, I had a few thoughts. My initial idea was to have the beading lace stick up like this. I think that isn't gonna offer enough support to the beading lace and I'm gonna end up with, because the, the linen is stiffer than the beading lace. So I think this is gonna gather and then not look great. I also noticed that the bias tape, as I'm turning it under, the shadow of it sticks out down here, which isn't horrible, but I just don't think it's going to be as attractive as I want it to be in the end. So my plan is actually going to be to move the beading lace down so that the top edge is flush with the top of the, the actual garment. I think this will provide more support for the beading lace, and when I gather it, it will actually help to 
gather the linen a bit more and I think it will just look nicer. Well, the arms eyes are finished. The facing has been hand tacked in very cleanly and I have the waistband pinned on. So we're gonna sew that on and then we can attach the, the bottoms. Super excited. Potentially could get these done today, which would be great. Hi guys, excuse the strange angle. Um, and also any puppy noises you hear, I've got Neville down here. Uh, so the combinations are a thing. Look at this. I'm super excited. I don't have enough ribbon to gather this section. Um, I've got ribbon on order from Etsy and it's coming. It's just not here yet. So, but I do think regardless, even if this is gathered, I think it fits beautifully in the top. Um, I need to put in the facing and add some, just a couple of buttons through here, just to keep it from gaping. The only issues that I'm really seeing are, I, I think, I don't even know if you can see this on camera, but I think the legs are gaping, are, are, I don't know. They seem to be laying at kind of a funny angle. I'm not quite sure. They're long, it's longer in the front. Maybe you can kind of see that it's way longer in the front than it is in the back. So I think I'm going to, I'm not trying to get it too high, but I do think it just looks kind of saggy, saggy baggy in the front. So I think this whole thing needs to just come up slightly like that and it will look a bit nicer. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Also the frills on the bottom, <laughs> you can see Neville. The frills on the bottom are, they're cute, but they're like sticking out really funny. So I think I'm just gonna run a stitch over them to hopefully just kind of smooth them, flatten them out a little bit. I like the the variegation on the bottom, but they're just like, they're all splayed out funny right now. So I think I need to stitch that down just slightly. But otherwise, I have a thing. So the facing has put in, put in the front and all the way around the leg opening. I also did just a little bit of a, a top stitching on this lace that I pleated on the bottom. Before it was just flaring out a lot and didn't look great. I wanted it to have some dimension to it, but not be quite so, quite so dimensional. So I did a little top stitch here and then another one down here just to kind of flatten it down a little bit. I think it looks much nicer. The issue I'm having with the facing this is just a raw piece of bias. It was sewn in to the inside and then it just gets flipped under, but there's no mention in the book of how to finish this edge. Maybe they didn't, maybe it was just left raw. I can't imagine that's what they would do. And because this is such a lightweight flimsy garment, I'm really loathe to roll it under again and create more bulk in the front. And I just got a brand new serger. So I think what I'm gonna do is serge, just serge this edge, which I realize is modern, but it is the undermost layer of the undermost layer. So hopefully no one will know that that's there. And then I'll just run a little top stitch close to the edge here to keep it from kicking out the other way. But I think I'm just gonna overlock this hem or this edge and just be done with it because I can't really think of anything else to do. And I don't really want to turn it under and fell it because that feels like it's going to be incredibly bulky. So yeah, I'm sure there's a million reasons not to do this. And hopefully in the comments, someone will tell me what I should have done, but you know, this is mine and that's how I want to do it. Also, I want an excuse to use my new serger, so. My Edwardian combinations are done. I think they just look beautiful. So I added a little bit of edge lace, which was really small, and I think it just gave it a wonderful little feminine touch. I got these little silk champagne colored ribbons.
So that is it, my combinations are complete. I am so ecstatic about this project. I hope this bodes well, knock touch wood. I hope this bodes well for the rest of the Edwardian era pieces. Um, I think this garment came out beautifully. It was a challenge to do all the drafting, um, but in the end, I think the pieces come out so beautifully that the challenge doesn't matter. Are these combinations perfect? No, <laughs> but I'm beyond pleased with how they fit and how they look. The next step in my 1910s dress project is going to be my corset layer. I'm going to fan lace my corset, so I'll show you guys how I accomplish that. Because that's such a short step, I think I'm going to include in that video my process of refitting my dress form for my Edwardian measurements. So you'll get to see me take apart my dress form and I'll show you how I adjust and pad out my dress form for each new project. So join me next time for more crafting, costuming, and lots of fun. See you soon.